When I was younger, I was so hungry for some kind of spiritual life. And right under my fingertips, I was creating it for myself with my work. Making art, it became a kind of haven for me. I mean, it was really my mom who I saw making things. She did make clothes and she taught me how to use a sewing machine when I was nine. When you learn to sew, you're engaging with fabric in such a direct way and really looking at it and thinking about it and learning about the material qualities. Those kinds of things were really integral to my evolution as a creative person. And then I majored in textiles in college as an undergrad, and that's where my mind was truly blown. <laughs> because I learned how to weave, and I learned how to make fabric, not just how to use fabric, but I learned how to build it. And that was its own kind of architecture and painting and, and, and so many things that just felt really rich to me and limitless. <laughs> Knitting Nation was a project I started in 2005, and it was during the Iraq War, and so I came up with this whole idea of making like a kind of knitting army with people in uniforms to make something collectively that I wouldn't be able to make on my own. I love that idea of collective labor, and we made an, a giant abstraction of American flag that went onto the ground. That project was so exciting because it was something that allowed me to do a commentary on patriotism, kind of ask questions about what the labor of making fabric is, to show the kind of toil of the labor. Also was really interested in the kind of dance that bodies do with machines to become kind of machines. At the other end of the spectrum in terms of slow to fast is these different methods that focus on automated digital weaving technology. Where the image and the form is embedded into the material and that's very exciting to me. I love that this technology can create this exquisite visual material experience in collaboration with humans. So after the fabric is finished being made, I get it back and I often deconstruct it. The design of the fabric is meant to have these threads that are called floats so that I can go in and cut them away in this manner. So it's all very intentional. Chaos and order, that's one of the dualities that I'm really interested in persistently, having this very refined and detailed and meticulous process destabilized by this destruction and chaos. It's like cutting hair where you say like, well, once you cut it off, you can't glue it back on. It's some kind of commitment, like there's this risk involved in these decisions. I think I was scared of abstraction as a young person. But as I started working in fiber, that shifted me into abstraction. There's pattern and repetition and modular pattern everywhere. I really feel sometimes like I am some kind of conduit of information from things that are very abstract and emotional to very concrete, I mean literally concrete, you know, like a staircase. Those moments, I'm in a kind of deep flow that's tapped into my spiritual being. 
in my newest work, symbols are emerging. And that is tied partly to my exploration of my spiritual life and connected to tarot and the solar system and to the universe and black holes. The collapse of the environment and the chaos and the lightning, volcano eruptions, maybe is scary, but is also like unstoppable. I think I'm exploring my emotional terrain in a bigger way that is connected to nature and the universe. Maybe even fear. I think about that a lot now, like in terms of queer life and queer existence and how so many things have happened to make queer people integrated and not um, persecuted, but it's just a promise. There's something connected to the landscape for me about that and things that are far away and perspective and distance. And I think of some of my new work as this idea about the promised land that's always out of reach. Maybe it's something I'm tying into something that is like part of the collective unconscious, but I'm also conjuring up these things as some kind of celebration and exploration that maybe is sinister, but on the other hand, it's extraordinary. Like, it's very ordinary to see a lightning bolt in the sky. We've all seen that. On the other hand, every time, every time it happens, it's extraordinary. That experience of, I can't believe what I'm looking at right now. That is awe and wonder. And I'm very interested in that. And my work, to me, feels like a manifestation of that. I'm making it for myself but I'm also conjuring up these things so that others can have that too. So there's their hit of awe and wonder. I hope that's one of my offerings as a, as a creative person. And maybe that's a moment of escape that I'm creating for a person or a moment to feel good in an otherwise terrible day. <laughs>